Hello, folks, and welcome to Tehran in Iran. My name is Fred Pleitgen, and you are live with CNN here on Facebook. And what we're doing today is we're covering Iran's parliamentary election that's happening on this day. It's a very important election uh, for this country. Could be a very pivotal election for this country as well. Uh, as usual in these elections, what you have is you have a list of moderate candidates and you have a list of more conservative hardline candidates. Um, and what's been going on in the past couple of months, the past couple of years, of course, is that Iran in the world has been in the news a lot. You've heard a lot uh, about the standoff that it's got with the Trump administration, massive sanctions uh, that have been put uh, on the Iranians uh, by uh, the Trump administration, the Iranians calling that economic terrorism. That's, of course, been very difficult for the economy here in this country. And that, of course, then has become one of the main issue, probably the main issue here in this election uh, as well. So that's sort of the framework in which all of this is taking place. But there's other things that you've seen about Iran as well. You had that recent standoff that almost brought uh, Iran and the United States to war when the U.S. killed a top Iranian general, Qasem Soleimani. The Iranians struck back with ballistic missiles against U.S. targets in Iraq. And then during that standoff, accidentally shot down a Ukrainian jetliner. And that, of course, led to some international issues as well. Also led to some international, ba or led to some backlash here inside of the country because a lot of the folks who were on that jetliner were actually Iranian passport holders. So right now, a turbulent international situation uh, for this country, difficult international situation. At the same time, the Islamic Republic of Iran says that it remains steadfast in the face of the sanctions from the United States. And of course, one of the things for them that's very important is to have this election go down without any hiccups to show that the political system of the Islamic Republic is robust, that it remains in place, and that it will remain in place in the future uh, as well. So the framework here is very, very interesting. And what you could see, um, if what we're hearing uh, has been correct, is that there could be a shift in the Iranian parliament uh, towards a more conservative parliament. And that could have massive repercussions, not just for this country, but internationally as well, because really the main agreement between Iran and so many other countries, five other countries actually, uh, is the Iran nuclear agreement. The U.S. has left that agreement. It's hanging on by a thread here in this country. There's a lot of criticism uh, of the agreement from conservative forces. and They become uh, the majority force in parliament. It could be even more difficult to keep that agreement alive. Of course, the Rouhani administration still does want to keep it alive. Now, that's the framework. But of course, we also want to take a look at how these elections actually take place. We're inside one of the most prominent uh, polling places, and we're going to start walking around and showing you stuff. This is a very important mosque here in uh, uh, Tehran. It's called the Hossein Ershad uh, Mosque, which was very famous during the Iranian Revolution. As you can see, it's a really beautiful building, a beautiful mosaics, beautiful scriptures here uh, on the walls. And this is the setting where, um, at this polling station, people can come and cast their ballots. And if we're going to go on and go this way a little bit, I can show you the process and we can actually walk through it a little bit. Um, one of the things I want to show you is that this, this mosque, because it's so prominent, so nice, actually has, also has a lot of media in it as well. There's some cameras back there. You can see there's another TV crew that's actually uh, doing a live stand up there. So a lot of the media also come here to report from here because the setting works and, and because it's quite easy to operate in here as well. But I want to take you over here, go over here, this is where the process starts, right? You have this desk uh, with the election workers who are making this election happen, working very hard all day. Um, now the possible voters, or the voters, they come in here and they register over there. So as you can see, they're registering one voter right now. They have to bring their passport. Um, and they also have to confirm that these people have not voted anywhere else before so that every person has one vote. And just to give you a little bit of uh, side knowledge here, one of the things that's been going on really only over the past day and a half or so um, is that the coronavirus has been confirmed in this country and two people have died of the coronavirus. And if you look over there, there's a little pad that those folks have. And normally you're supposed to give a fingerprint ID. Some people are doing that, other people are not doing that. Um, it has become optional since the coronavirus has, uh, has uh, broken out here in this country. And four people have so far been confirmed killed here of the uh, coronavirus. So this is where people register. They then get um, a sheet of paper uh, um, where it says where they have to write down the candidates they want to vote for. And then they go over here. This is also a very important place. We'll just follow you around. You can see there's a big board here with people taking notes 
Um, and that board has all of the candidates on them. Uh, and next to the candidate, it has the candidates, the name of the father of the candidate, and then it has the number of the candidate. And the candidate that the folks have to vote for, they write down that number, actually in those uh, little cubicles over there, and then what they do after that is they go to the ballot boxes and cast their vote. As you can see, one of the gentlemen here has an empty ballot paper where he's now looking to see which candidate he wants to support. We'll leave him that privacy and not, not, not show you what he's writing down. The ballot boxes um, are sort of quite similar to what you would find in a lot of other elections as well. Um, you can see here um, the ballot boxes are sealed. Election workers over there. Hello, sir. How are you? Everything good? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, as you can see, slowly filling up. Uh, we come from CNN Television, from America. Yeah. Don't forget that this is the only democratic country. Even in America, there is no democracy. Right. A lot of folks I talk about. This is the only democratic. What you know the thing is, CNN they always tell lies. I always tell the truth. No, no. <laughs> So a lot of folks, a lot of folks obviously coming here to speak to us. A lot of people are quite critical of, of the West here. Um, by and large, very nice people are very accommodating people. Um, so that, that's sort of the process that you go to. And right now, um, I see that there's some questions coming in from you folks. So I want to try and answer those questions as best uh, I can, because we're still in the fairly early stages uh, of, the, uh, of the voting. So we have here, Susie Salis Kamel are asking, are we expecting a change here through the parliamentary elections. Um, let me put it this way. The parliament is only one of the bodies that sets the rules for the country, that makes the politics here in this country. By far the most important authority is, of course, the country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. He's the one who essentially um, has the last word on anything. Then you have the president. The president here in this country actually has a pretty, pretty strong power base as well, and you have his cabinet. The parliament uh, is has its powers as well. So if you do see a shift here uh, in the parliament towards a more conservative parliament, uh, then you could see some political changes here as well in the political direction of this country. We can move over here, we can see there's more people who are, uh, who are voting, who are registering the votes, and more people over there as well. And then um, we have another question. This is a very interesting one. I want to I get to this one, actually. Is one um, uh, current, you're asking, why are moderates barred from running? This is something I need to explain because there's a council here in Iran uh, that vets candidates that are allowed to take place in the election. And this, uh, this time, um, I think it was around 16,000 or 14,000 uh, candidates that wanted to run. And it was around between seven and 8,000 that were banned from running. And the moderate forces in this country are saying that a disproportionate amount of people who were banned from running or barred from running were moderates in the uh, election. Now, we went to the body that uh, made that decision, the Guardian Council, and I asked them what exactly their criteria is for allowing people to run, not allowing people to run. They said that it had nothing to do with their political affiliation. They said there's other factors, but it is one of the things that uh, some of the moderates uh, in this country are saying is that they believe that many of their candidates were not allowed to run in this election, uh, and, and therefore some of them might not be that enthusiastic today to actually come out and vote. It's a very, very interesting, very important question. And one of the things I also want to say to that is one of the things at the end of the day uh, that we're going to be looking at and that a lot of people are going to be looking at is going to be voter turnout. It's going to be how many people are actually going to come out and cast their ballots and then we'll see at the end of the day how successful this election really was. And you could tell in the day running up to the election, you could tell uh, that um, the government here in this country wanted people to come out. The Supreme Leader said people should come out and vote. It's their civic duty. The President said people should come out and vote. There's banners around the city also telling people to come out and, um, and, and vote uh, as well. Uh, when are women going to vote? Women voting right now. Uh, go over here, you can see that there's... Uh, that was the next question, is are women voting? They are, uh, everybody uh, can come out and vote. People registering right now. Um, so really no, no difference as far as that is concerned. And, and as you can see, both men and women from what we see coming out in fairly equal uh, numbers. Um, and we have another uh, person asking, doesn't the Supreme Leader pick and choose who can run? How can this be an election when the people don't have an actual opposition to vote for? Now, of course, that is true, um, or to a certain extent. Um, we've noted that that body, uh, the Guardian Council, is the one that, that vets the people who are actually around to run. Not the Supreme Leader himself. It's the Guardian Council that does so. 
Um, they had a press conference a couple of days ago where they sort of explained their reasoning for having certain candidates, not having other candidates, uh, and, and said that the reason why they did that was uh, you know, in case people have court cases against them, if they have a bad reputation, as they put it. They said it had nothing to do with the political affiliation of the people running. But as, as we've noted before, there are some moderates who were not very happy with that process this time uh, uh, around. Um, is there any danger, this is an interesting question, uh, by Marco Farinazo, is there any danger of terrorist attack in spite of the fact that we are in a Muslim monument? I, right now, I mean, you can't really go outside right now because uh, there's sort of security there. There is uh, security here outside though. Um, it doesn't seem as though the threat level is very high. I mean, you see sort of a police presence here outside. You see it outside of some other polling stations as well. But it doesn't look as though there's really a big security threat that folks here um, are dealing with. You can see here, by the way, that other TV stations, of course, the Iranian TV stations, they do a lot of live reporting from here. They have live around the clock. Um, you can see there's a video feed of Iranian TV that has, uh, that has all sorts of Iranian channels that are on. So this is obviously a big event here. Um, and I think actually they're filming us right now. <laughs> there you go. Um, let me see what else we have. When do they get the results? The results will probably start tricking in sometime tomorrow noon, tomorrow, maybe a little later in the day. It usually goes quite quickly because what they do is after the um, precincts close, they'll start counting the votes and sort of start tallying uh, who has won which district, which precinct, and then you'll sort of at least fairly quickly get a feel for which direction things are going in. And then of course also, you'll also probably start to get a feel for not just um, which direction things are going in, but then also how high the voter turnout is actually going to be. And in other words, how successful this uh, election in the end has been. Uh, what happens with the U.S. if more hardliners are voted in? That's, of course, one of the big questions that we're asking, being an American TV network, is what impact could this have on the U.S.? Um, I don't think that much is going to change, because essentially what the Iranians have been saying vis-a-vis -vis the Trump administration is um, they say they're not going to negotiate with the Trump administration. That's the position of the Rouhani government. It's the position of the uh, foreign minister, Jabhat Zarif. And those people are going to stay in power, and that is probably going to reinforce if the parliament becomes more conservative than it has been in the past. So that's been our look at the voting that's going on here in Tehran. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. We're going to be here for the rest of the day, see what's going on. I hope you folks have a very successful day and then also a great weekend coming up. Thank you.